Matt Ely here with another End Myopia video. It's been a little too long. I think my last video was on January the 1st. I talked about my vision improvement goals for 2019. So I will give a little update on that and also talk some about my daily routines. Unless you are someone who is going to move to the tropics and look into the distance all the time, you have to figure out how to manage daily close work without doing so much that it causes you strain. Strain such that your eyesight doesn't get better or gets worse. Improvements. It's very slow at this point and I'm at that last stage of low myopia. I have basically stopped wearing glasses at this stage. I'm seeing 2050 with reasonable consistency, sometimes better. I can get 20, 40 letters without glasses, starting at minus five, a little over five years ago. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> it's not consistent yet, and I need it to be easy and consistent. No active focus required. Just look at the eye chart and bam, 2040. I'm not there yet. We are making progress. The strange experience I'm having now is these alternating single eye clear flashes where for 30 seconds up to a few minutes, one eye will see very well. 20, 30, maybe better. And the other doesn't. And then later that day or the next day, the other eye will see pretty well, but not the other eye. And it's weird because it seems to have nothing to do with my dominant eye. I'm left eye dominant. My right eye has always lagged a little bit behind in acuity, but I've been equalized for a long time. I don't know what's going on there, but I take it as a really good sign that my non-dominant eye will see better than 2040 at least some of the time. Really just have to wait. The interesting thing that I think I'll see here <laughs> several months from now is what happens when we get to low light. We're at peak daylight, as you can see here. This is my front yard. So what will this be like in the winter? Will I end up wearing some glasses again? Don't know, we'll see. That said, daily routine. So I work in an office. What I have done is tried to structure my time so that I am able to alternate close work with non-close work so that I don't end up stacking periods of more than three hours at a time of close work. By doing that, I am, I think, preventing ciliary spasm and I've been able to make pretty good consistent progress over these five years here. Here's what this looks like. I get up about 5.30 in the morning. I have a morning routine, stuff I do that takes me 30 to 40 minutes to kind of wake up and get going. None of it involves close work. Then I take my shower, get dressed, that stuff. No close work. I help get my kids up. No close work. And then I end up leaving for work at 7.30, maybe 8 o'clock. About a half an hour drive to work. So think about a day it's, I've gone up, woken up at 5.30, it's now, let's say, 8 or 8.30, and I haven't done any close work. Okay? Now I get to the office. I meet with clients, so let's say it's 8 a.m. and I'm just getting to work. I typically won't schedule my first client meeting until 9.30. So maybe I have an hour and a half of close work right here. Then I have a meeting. 9.30, let's call it 9.30 to 10.30. I'm at 10.30, I've done an hour and a half of close work. A meeting with a client in an office is not close work. It's not distance work either. You're not getting stimulus, but you're not staring at a screen in the way that causes ciliary spasm and that causes your vision to potentially get worse or get stuck. Now, let's say 10.30 to 11, I'll have to do some notes and some close work on the computer screen another half an hour close work. Let's say a client meeting 11, it's 11 to 12. Um, that's 
non-close work again. So now I've done an hour and a half of close work and then another half an hour of close work and it's 12. I've been up for six and a half hours and I've done two hours of close work. 12 to 1, I'm going to do my very best to take a break and stay off the computer. If possible, I'm outside going for a walk or I'm eating lunch somewhere where I can look into the distance. So I'm going to get myself 30 minutes to an hour of actual distance stimulus. I got a half an hour of distance stimulus on the drive in. So now I'm at, let's call it on a good day, an hour and a half of stimulus by 1 o'clock. 1 to 1.30, close work, clean up from the meeting. That would be another half an hour of close work. 1.30 to 2.30, client meeting. 2.30 to 3, a little more close work, maybe another meeting at 3, that's 3 to 4, 4 to 4.30, uh, clean up from the meeting, 4.30 to 5, close work on the computer to prepare for the next day. So, I've done some close work, but never enough at a time that it's going to induce some ciliary spasm. That's on a day when I'm having appointments and meeting with clients. What if it's a day where I schedule admin work and... I don't meet with any clients. I'm going to back up before I get there. It's 5 o'clock. I'm driving home. Another half an hour of distance stimulus. 5.30, maybe it ends up being 6 because I need a little extra time. But until 6 or 6.30, dinner, clean up dinner. I'm going to then play with my kids for a half an hour or an hour before we start bedtime. So that, if, <laughs> with this light hopefully is outside and create some distance stimulus. Then the bedtime routine doesn't involve much close up. There is a bedtime story and a little bit of that, but it's not but a few minutes. So here you can see the amount of distance I've managed to put into a day and how I've managed to compress close up time so that I get a reasonable amount of stimulus while still working indoors in an office. Let's say it's a day where I'm working, but I only have one client meeting or I don't have any, and I have to do close work computer stuff. What I would do then is try to time block. So I do an hour to an hour and a half, maybe two hours of intense close work where I'm really on the screen, and then I'll break up with tasks that take a little less brain power. This is good for concentration too right or maybe I'll do some phone calls well phone calls are not close work because I'm not looking at the screen I'll get the phone number I use a headset so in my office I can look into the distance away from the screen if I do a half an hour or an hour there if I'm alternating an hour an hour and a half maybe even two with a half an hour break of non close work phone calls, anything like that, it's good for my concentration, it's breaking up the close work. So I might still do, let's say in an eight hour day, three two hour blocks of close up, but it's broken up with space in between so that I still get that set of several hours in the morning before I do close up, I get a break at lunch. A few breaks during the day where I might actually do some distance work and then a drive home and some non close up time between dinner and when my kids go to bed. I'll probably read for a half an hour after my kids are in bed, maybe 45 minutes, but then I try to do some other things that are non close up. You can see that here I'm able to maybe even get three hours of distance, good distance active focus in a day where I haven't specifically made a long block of time outside. I haven't had to move to the tropics and look in the distance all the time. I haven't had to quit my day job. I've just had to think a little bit about how I can structure my day. I get it. This won't necessarily work for everyone. Some folks have jobs where they have to look at the screen for most of the day to all of the day you got to do what you can to figure out how to reduce that. 
as best you can. But as Jake has said in his videos, the day is the day. You have to work, you're going to use a computer. But figure out the time that you're not at work. How much close-up time do you really need before you go to work? How much close-up time do you need after work? These are the things to do to get the long-term eyesight improvement. Hope this helps. Shout out to some of the other folks who've made videos. Andrew, I'm watching your videos and enjoying them, and to everyone else as well. It's exciting to see lots of videos coming up because, and my hope is great. Hopefully everybody who's watching likes it and is enjoying it. I said my goal was to pass the DMV test this year. Don't know if I'll make that or not. I'm definitely enjoying the clear flashes when I get them and doing the right things. It's just going to take time. This low myopia phase, the transition from minus one or minus 0 0.75 to lenses to no glasses is a big leap. It's some work, but totally worth it. If you're watching this, and you're doing end myopia. When you see the clear flash and you see this world in all its beauty as it can look, all the time is worth it. I absolutely recommend this thing. I hope this helps. I won't promise to answer questions now. Some folks have asked questions in my other videos that I probably haven't answered lots of things going on in life and unfortunately answering questions to YouTube folks is one that is hard to just time find time to do but I, I will keep making some videos and at least one more this year to say if I make it to 2040 or not whether I do or not we're getting back to 2020 I don't know when I hope soon but we're gonna get there you can too Get the good habits in place, reduce your close-up, look into the distance, do active focus, you'll get there. Until next time.